Hello everybody, I am back with another video. Today going to be updating you guys on my Summer Backlog Challenge progress, which I've actually been pretty successful this summer. Um, I haven't been beating a ton of games, but the games I have been beating um, have been games that I've been wanting to complete for a while, and they're also pretty long games as well. So, um, quality over quantity, I'm going to go ahead and say that. But there's really only one game that I want to talk at length about, and then after that, I actually want to also show you guys the games that I'm currently playing and that I hope to complete here uh, in the next few weeks because August 16th, I actually um, have to drive up to school and uh, begin my senior year of college, which in and of itself is mind-blowing to think about, but I won't be playing a whole lot of games, you know, once school starts. So let's just go ahead and get started and discuss in brief some of the games that I've completed and then at length, uh, the last one that I actually just completed this morning. Okay, the game I'm going to talk about first here is actually a game that I didn't necessarily beat completely. But Tales of the Abyss 3D, I have basically labeled it as beaten because I can't stand to spend any more time with the game. I put in about 42 hours into the game and, and I just can't stand it any longer, okay? Ten hours in... Um, there was a very major plot twist um, that really kind of spurred some really interesting character development with one of the characters that, um, previous to that moment, was just unbearably annoying. And um, so from then on, I actually really enjoyed the game, and everything about it I, I really did love until about 35 hours in, I was, I was just done. Uh, the game really wasn't doing anything new, I just felt like I was going from city to city, just to hear someone say a few lines of dialogue, and then I go to another city. I was just ready for an epic boss finale, and then call it quits, which I felt they were they did that successfully. And then, of course, with its RPG tropes aplenty and tells the abyss here, there's some weirdo plot twist, and they somehow managed to extend the game an extra ten hours, and I wasn't gonna have any of it. I hit forty two hours, and I was like, okay. I thought the game should have ended like, you know, five, six hours ago. I'm done. I can't spend any more time with this. Plus, the plot just gets so complex with all these phonons and miasmas and all this other jargon that I just don't want to take the time to understand. Um, so, for what it's worth, it is a good game. I just, I was just spent by the end and I really just was tired of it. So, I didn't complete it, but 42 hours in, I'm going to go ahead and just label that completed. The next game... The Sly Collection, I actually beat Sly 2, uh, which is really cool because you actually platinum the game uh, just by going through and beating the game. You don't have to do any of the other extra stuff. So um, that was really fun. I don't think it surpassed my love of Sly 1 just because of the memories I have playing the first one. But I really do like how in the second game they, they allow you to play as Bentley and Murray, uh, of course Sly's companions in the game. And it is a much more extensive game. I mean, I think this first Sly game you can beat in under 10 hours. And the second game actually takes 20 plus hours. It's really a pretty long game. But I don't think it overstays its welcome. It's always mixing things up, giving you new, um, you know, abilities and different power-ups and things like that. And then, of course, the ability to control Murray and Bentley is always fun as well. I started the third game, and it was already just doing things that I just wasn't really enjoying a whole lot. Um... The story is always fun and enjoyable. It's like watching a cartoon, basically. But uh, as far as like just the gameplay itself, I, I wasn't enjoying the third one as much. So I put that down. I'll pick it up definitely at some point and play through it. Uh, but I really want to play Thieves in Time because I've heard that uh, that was you know built from the ground up for the PlayStation Three is a really really great game uh, for the Sly series. So Sly Two: Band of Thieves, excellent game. Uh, highly recommended. And then. I'm not going to go into any explanation about this. Kingdom Hearts HD, the 1.5 HD remix. Uh, it's a remake of my favorite game of all time, so obviously I enjoyed it through and through. It was just excellent revisiting all of those Disney worlds and uh, all its HD goodness. And uh, I cannot wait for the 2.5 remix, which comes out in December, so you know, hopefully I can snag that around the holiday time and then uh, have that on my backlog for maybe next summer. I'll play through that. Uh, leading up to, hopefully, the inevitable announcement of the Kingdom Hearts 3 release date, which still remains to be seen at this point. But, amazing game, of 
course, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, what I want to spend most of my time discussing here is a game that for so long was in my backlog, and I just kept putting it off. It came out three years ago, I believe now, and I finally was challenged to play it uh, for the Gentleman's Challenge on Pete's Game Room Forum, and I'm so, so happy that I was because it is a masterpiece of a game, and that is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I honestly don't know where to begin because everything that I wanted from a Zelda adventure from the wonderful orchestrated music to really interesting and inventive dungeon design to okay Skyloft and the surface aren't the most interesting of worlds to explore but I felt that they were interesting enough and the character development was just so so good um, just some really bizarro characters in here too, but again, it was just a complete package for me, and I really, really feel that this is really at the height of, of what I want from a Zelda game. Of course, The Ocarina of Time is, is my personal favorite Zelda game, it's actually my second favorite game of all time, and this came really, really close to reaching that same love. I mean, I just felt that it really did everything right. Now, there are a number of Legend of Zelda games that I just haven't played. I haven't played Majora's Mask. I haven't played Link's Awakening. Um, I didn't complete Wind Waker. I played a fair amount of the game when it was on the GameCube, and I really, really did enjoy it. I actually much prefer sailing to, you know, traveling by bird and Skyward Sword. I just felt like that was just really, really tedious and just so uninteresting. Especially, you know, if you were going to interesting places, then it would have been okay, but... Skyloft was just so uninspired in my opinion. I just felt like there was really never anything in that environment that you were just longing to go to. Like you were just like, man, I want to go on my bird and just go out to that place way over there because there was nothing really there. There were just like these little floating spheres that you would go to and there was a little box of treasure. I mean, that was that was literally all that was there. And I just felt like they could have done so much more with that world. I mean, I think it's an unbelievable idea. It's, it's almost like, um, you know, Bioshock Infinite's uh, Columbia. You know, it's this, this massive world in the sky, yet there's nothing there. I mean, it's just, if you have a giant world, that's great. And, you know, the Grand Theft Auto always, um, I feel like Rockstar always brags about the world that they have, and it's just so massive. But is there actually anything interesting to do there? And if the answer is no, then I don't really care how massive it is. And I just felt, again, that it was just very uninspired. There wasn't really much to do there. It looked beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Graphically, it's very impressive. But there just wasn't much to do there. So that was really my, my biggest gripe about the game. Oh my goodness. The second is fee fi fo fum whatever you want to call that thing. It, she was just one of the most annoying, probably the most annoying AI companion I've ever had in a game. They're there to guide you and to help you and assist you on this, you know, epic adventure. And I just felt like there were moments where, where Fi did that, or Fi, I honestly don't know how to pronounce it. Um, I felt like she did that very often, but the vast majority of the time, she was just an annoyance. She was just this little fly in your shoulder that you were just like, get away, you know, it's just like, you know, how that happens sometimes, and it's just, no, go away, like, not, Master, I, I believe there is a 96% probability that you're in danger, um, because we're in lava, and, you know, it's just, just like, no dip Sherlock, like, oh my gosh, you know, and, and people have complained endlessly about that, so I shouldn't continue to go on and harp on it, but it really was annoying, and it just got under your skin so often. Now, my favorite Zelda game of all time is The Ocarina of Time. And this came really, really close to reaching that same love. But there were just a few things that kept it from getting that, you know, same token of appreciation. And one of them being something that's really, really important to me in video games, especially video games like Zelda, and that is the soundtrack. There are so many memorable tunes in The Ocarina of Time from... You know, I, I could just go on all day as far as the number of songs, but 
right when you hear it, it just instantly sets you back in that same moment when you first had the controller in your hands and you were playing it. Or in my case, because I didn't play it all the way through until I had my 3DS, I actually beat it in my dorm room, but that's a different story for a different day. But I can just, just you know, instantly be snapshot back into that moment playing the game. But with Skyward Sword, I don't feel like I'm ever going to have that same tie-in. Because there was never a time where I was in a dungeon and I was just like, wow, this is so interesting. I love this sound. I love this music. and It's so memorable. There's just really none of that here, I didn't feel. Um, you know, maybe you guys felt differently if you played through the entire game, but... Um, I, just, I don't know, there's just, there's no Gerudo Valley, there's no Kakaroki Forest, or, you know, the pronunciations in these games is just awful. Um, but there's none of that here. I just felt like it was more just background noise as opposed to r really just immersing yourself, yourself in that environment and making you feel like you're really there. I just, I didn't feel like that was really present in Skyward Sword. I felt like for a game that I spent 40 hours in, I never grew bored or tired because they were always throwing in these new equipment upgrades or, or just new equipment in general, um, like the beetle that would help you, um, you know, you could pick up bombs and you'd have to solve puzzles by placing, you know, guiding the beetle with a bomb and dropping it somewhere. Or, you know, the hook shot, um, you know, the bow and arrow, there are just all these really interesting and fun to use abilities and, and equipment upgrades that I felt weren't just, um, you know, shoehorned into the game for the sake of having a, a huge inventory of items. I felt like each one had its purpose and was very meaningful in, in puzzle solving. I mean, you literally had to go through your repertoire of, of, of inventory items and you were like, God, I mean, there were literally times that I'd have to set the controller down and think, what the heck do I have to do next? You know, I'm in this dungeon. I know I have everything in my arsenal that I need to move forward and progress, but I just don't know what to do. So I had to, you know, examine my environment and use that, that inventory of items. And each one was necessary to progress. And I thought that was just really telling of how well developed this game was by Nintendo. And and just how inventive the dungeons were. I just felt like puzzle solving wasn't tedious, it wasn't boring, it wasn't uninteresting, it was challenging, and it was engaging, and it was, again, like, I, I, there were times when I had to put the controller down and literally ask myself, what the heck am I supposed to do next? You know, and, and, and I just think that's awesome, because for a 40-hour game, I never would imagine myself playing a Zelda game for 40 hours, because... You know, the ones that I'd played previously, I mean, the Ocarina of Time, I beat in 21, 20 hours. And uh, Link Between Worlds, I beat that in under 20. Um, so, you know, I'm just not used to that. But it didn't feel like 40 hours. Um, it just felt just perfect. It, it really did. And, and just one other thing, you know, um, you know, Link's never spoken in any of the Zelda games. And... And moving forward with the series, I think I would maybe like to see that, uh, depending on how they get a voice actor for that. You know, that'd be tough. But um, he does make noises. And when you're, oh my gosh, like it is amazing. When you are in like the Earth Temple and and if you fall in the lava, he just like jumps up and he's like, yeah! It is amazing. So... I cannot praise this game enough. I felt that the motion plus controls, you know, many people thought that that was um, a, an annoyance. Some people thought it rendered the game unplayable or just, you know, too taxing to, to enjoy the game because you had to waggle your arms around, but it's not waggling. I mean, it is seriously so spot on with your movements. It's incredible. And it really challenges you to figure out not only... Um, the pattern of your enemies, but I mean, you really have to strategize and, and take a step back from your enemy and figure out, okay, how does this person work? How do they move? What are their, you know, you can't just go in and just hack and slash and hope and wish that you're going to defeat your enemies because that's not going to happen. You're going to die really quickly. And I think that was so amazing because this is a true Zelda game built from the ground up for the Wii. And I felt like 
to this day, there is not a game that I think with motion controls plays better than this. Because I just think it, it is so spot on with its, its movements and everything. It's just, I'm done. It's amazing. I loved it. Masterpiece of a game. I beat it this morning. I beat the final boss. No spoilers. If you haven't played Skyward Sword, please do yourself a favor and play this game. It is amazing. Just really quickly, I want to show you guys some of the games that um, I plan to play over the next few weeks. I plan on continuing playing Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box. Um, about halfway through the game, uh, chapter four, six and a half hours in or so, uh, enjoying it, not as much as Unwound Future, uh, but ah, not even as much as Curious Village, to be honest, but it is still pretty good. Um, more than anything, the cutscenes are just amazing. I love the cutscenes, the voice acting, and the music in these games. Uh, the puzzle solving in this one isn't the greatest, but uh, and the story is not also. But anyways, enjoyable nonetheless. I'm going to play it to its completion. The next game, I, for whatever reason, I just had a bug up my butt to play a Mario game. And uh, Super Mario 3D Land is filling that itch. I already beat the game, but I want to go back and get all the star coins um, so I can unlock, what is it, Luigi and the special world and all the other stuff that you can unlock in this game. So I'm really enjoying my time with this, uh, revisiting it. It is a wonderful, wonderful Mario game, especially to have on the go. And kind of going alongside that, I've never played, never played New Super Mario Bros. Wii. So I'm really interested to see uh, how this game plays, how it looks, how it sounds, everything about it. Really looking forward to playing that. I'll probably begin that here in the next few days. And then I also want to play, oh, everyone, hold your uh, horses here. Metroid Other M. I know the Metroid fans out there are cursing my name right now, but um, the only Metroid game I've played extensively is Metroid Fusion, which I beat, which is an amazing game, and Metroid 2 The Return of Samus on the Game Boy. Um, I have Super Metroid on my virtual console, and I actually just recently listened to the Cartridge Club podcast episode where they showcased that game, and uh, Super Metroid that is. And uh, it sounded amazing. It sounds like, you know, all the praise that it has gotten is well-deserved. But I don't want to play that game and then go to take a step down and play this. I want to play this and probably enjoy it and then play Super Metroid and be wowed. I think that makes sense. So let me know what you guys think. That's that video in a nutshell. Those are the games that I've been playing and really enjoying as of late. I love, love, love this Summer Backlog Challenge because I've bought... Very few games this summer, and I've instead enjoyed the games that have been on my shelf for ages. I think that's that's really important to play the games that you actually have as opposed to just buying more and more games and, and putting them on the shelf. But anyways, guys, that is everything. Let me know how your challenge is going, if you're t partaking. If not, what games have you been playing and what games have you been beating? And also, what are you looking forward to in the next few months, as always? Uh, you know, leave a comment in the section below. And uh, I'll see you guys soon with a new video. Thanks for watching.